so hello everybody. Um, I'm Matthias. I'm an artist and um, since 2012, um, we, uh, since 2011, we started Callnet. Callnet is a uh, Wi-Fi uh, mesh networking app that works uh, completely internet independent. Um, we started it because um, of kind of this list. This are, is a list uh, which is not um, uh, fully complete of uh, um, internet uh, takedowns for political reasons. And um, in the protest in 2009 in Iran, um, uh, these protests were called uh, the Green Revolution because many people turned their uh, Twitter pages um, green, their Twitter profiles, and um, it was called the first social media revolution. But when um, Al Jazeera made um, an investigation into this, they found out that only 60 um, people, our profiles were coming from Tehran. So people were looking and uh, chatting about something they were not really part of. So what to do when there is no internet? But it can also happen uh, to everyone. This is uh, a, a news from uh, last month from Germany where the interior minister claims he wants to have access to all the encrypted uh, chats. So, what we um, wanted to do and started to do is to create uh, an app that can interconnect all the devices into a mesh network. For that when you don't want to have a connection on or when there is no connection, you can really interact with people nearby. I will quickly try to give you an overview on how that looks and feels like. So. Okay, so when you start CallNet, you get such a, um, a GUI. It is basically zero config. Um, it uh, hijacks your uh, Wi-Fi, it turns it we will come to that now into an IBS as ad hoc mode. It starts um, the OLSR routing protocol. It gives you um, kind of automatically um, an IP address. Um, it starts all the servers that are all decentralized, which uh, is a messenger. So we can write messages here, and um, uh, which is. So the message arrived, which is a user discovery. We can see who else is here. And uh, also a file sharing. <laughs> um, you can download files. And you can also directly oops, directly call other users. And then over um, voice over IP, you can um, you can talk to them. So these are some of the features. We also exp extended the whole thing. You can you can try it on also a web app, which is available here on the Callnet AP. Um, we uh, wrote this uh, program for OS X, for um, Linux, for um, Windows, for Android, and there was once also an iOS version of it. To be able to communicate with people who are in a situation where there is no internet, um, uh, we created a captive portal where you can directly download the app so it can expand. Further, if someone has internet in this um, network, it will be shared or it can be shared. This is a user decision with the others. Everything is simple, installable. It's multi-language. It's user translatable via a JSON file. And um, you can also 
see the network out of the OLSR table, which can get quite big. It integrates also in uh, community mesh networks that use OLSR. So we have these uh, um, templates that uh, communities can put in and you can communicate over other um, Wi-Fi um, community mesh networks. This is uh, the template or one of it that can be filled out. You can also configure it yourself manually with a template. It's easier. It's uh, open source, it's in uh, GPL3, and it's on GitHub. So this um, was the whole thing, how it looked like. It's uh, written in C. It's a, uh, the call lib with all the uh, services, uh, web server, messenger, file sharing. Um, there's, of course, a database. There is uh, uh, the voice over IP. There is the user discovery at the HTTP client and also a DNS client, which then um, communicates with the mesh routing protocol OLSR. It's kind of tightly integrated there. And there is only um, uh, a few things that we need to write for every um, platform. The um, GUI is in HTML5, and then you kind of just need to open a web view. It has been used all around the world in many countries. Um, I give one specific example where we have been invited in um, 2014 before the municipal elections in Istanbul, where people were afraid um, of election rigging to start such a, a mesh network. Um, during that time, um, they uh, changed the whole internet censorship system from a DNS censorship to an IP um, uh, filtering. They hijacked also the whole port uh, 53 so that you couldn't get another um, DNS um, uh, server. Uh, before they uh, stopped YouTube, um, uh, Twitter, all to alleged um, corruption, corruption uh, scandals from uh, Erdogan and his party. So we gave workshops in many hackerspaces and um, started the first um, mesh network there. Um, also with many activists from Egesi Park, we then um, developed together with them a, a mobile station uh, from the problems they have during the, the Gezi protests uh, in Istanbul, um, where there was often no connection and also no possibility to communicate among them. So there are some problems, and we do have some problems. Um, let's call them challenges. Um, one of the problems is uh, the ad hoc Wi-Fi mode which is dying. It's not supported um, uh, in many devices. It's not supported by all the mobile devices. It's not supported um, <coughs> in, um, in the uh, new Intel Wi-Fi drivers. They kind of say they can do it, but then usually they don't. Um, it uh, gets restricted on uh, the, um, the Apple um, also desktop systems where you cannot um, do all the things you want anymore. You cannot open a network that easily. You need to hack that a bit. We have a uh, huge legacy code base of over 200,000 uh, lines of code um, in C. We have a, a GUI with a, which has kind of one long JavaScript file with over 2,000 lines that nobody wants to touch anymore. And so we decided that we need to make a radical change. First of all, in many, uh, in many regions where people uh, connect us there, the hardware is limited and usually people only have mobile um, hardware. So to go mobile first um, is our main goal, which means we need to say goodbye to a few things that we were able to do before. Um, routing protocols such as OLSR or Batman, they need um, administrative rights. You don't have on uh, mobile phones. Uh, um, in the early days, we did it with um, 
uh, rooting the Androids and uh, also jailbreaking the iOS. Nobody does that anymore, or just a few people. It's also a painful process, and it's not successful on any device. We cannot relay anymore on uh, the ad hoc mode, and we need, uh, therefore, also to do, at least in the, in the mobile, on the mobile devices, the routing in the user space. So we decided to um, kind of change our entire code base and rewrite uh, the whole application. The GUI um, is rewritten in uh, Ember.js. This is an, uh, also an HTML5 um, uh, framework. We also decided to make clear um, a stack of layers in which the whole project is organized with defined um, APIs where uh, that can be interchanged and also for other projects to join in because there are many um, uh, collaboratives that would, would like and NGOs that would like to program their own app which is based on this um, technology. The whole system will be written or is written now in Rust um, which gives us uh, some advantages. It's uh, uh, less uh, code intensive, um, uh, we have uh, less um, errors and we get faster We get faster to a result. It's much easier to program. So we have, uh, this, we have services and nodes, these um, are the users, we have then the service API, we have uh, the routing and then we have the network modules and interface. The new routing protocol which we are um, writing at the moment has the internal um, code name Ratman. Um, this is kind of a, yeah, <laughs> a donation to Batman, um, which we like very much and uh, also has inspired us uh, a great part. It will be uh, partially a distance vector protocol, but it will also be enlarged um, for uh, delay tolerant networks. So we want to be able to um, do both things in one protocol. Maybe about it uh, more clear. So the nodes are the identities of the network. Uh, we got also rid of all the IP addresses. The identity is uh, just a, a hash of your um, uh, of your key. And then we have the, those interfaces. And in the routing layer, oh, there are some icons missing. Um, in the routing core, we have the routing table. We have a uh, uh, heuristics. Um, engine and uh, we have a persistence module and all these things are then um, on the next layer which is the network layer that should be network agnostic uh, which means we want to be able to interconnect with all the networking possibilities that there are um, so with every lawn in any internet coffee, um, over direct Wi-Fi, over tethering, over Bluetooth, um, but over also over community networks and also over internet overlay possibilities. When I'm talking about um, delay tolerant networking, this is a term that can mean kind of uh, everything and nothing. Um, we, uh, or I talk about um, store and forward, um, uh, networking, which means these are is basically package delivering um, between certain network clouds. So some people are connected and there is another group of people that are connected and there are some uh, nodes that are traveling in between and um, they can, due to their capacity, um, deliver packages. So we will not have, of course, real-time communication there. Um, the um, delay tolerant uh, networking, um, that was one of the things that we uh, once did um, here in, um, in France, uh, in Montreuil, um, together with uh, our friends um, living in informal settlements, um, 
was put on this bicycle and which was a, a kind of one of these uh, traveling items that also could interconnect with the internet um, as there is uh, internet in, in all the parks here in, in Paris. And um, here you could give tasks um, to uh, the bicycle and the bicycle could then um, interconnect with the world. So kind of that, but a bit, um, yeah, also mobile friendlier, maybe. So this <laughs> leads me um, uh, to my last point, uh, which is um, here, the CSP that um, I know uh, quite well from uh, some years ago. It was the time um, uh, when um, uh, Hollande uh, took office when uh, Manuel Valls became the new prime minister and when uh, they got rid uh, of um, many of the informal settlements um, in Paris but also in the outskirts. And there was an informal settlement on the other side of the canal here. And um, the CISPE invited us to uh, create also here um, such an uh, uh, mesh network. Um, we were act actually working with many cultural organizations um, in the banlieue um, of Paris, of Paris, um, to uh, create community and neighborhood networks. This is a network in Rizorangi, uh, and that's an antenna from Montreuil. Also doing uh, many workshops together uh, with the people, and um, some of them uh, getting really. Um, inventive to get the best connection to the cultural centers. So that's the end of my talk. Maybe you have uh, questions. Thank you. So when I connect to your network, to, to this application, no, when I use your application, I, I will host a Wi-Fi network. People can connect to that. And we can all talk to each other within the network. Is there any sort of authentication or uh, like, do I have to know who am I connecting to in some sense? No, or? the network is totally open and it does not need any thing to start. So it, um, is really zero config. You you are kind of not um, in touch with the whole uh, crypto um, stuff. The old version has some parts that are not encrypted. The new version is um, fully encrypted, and um, it's uh, it's done in this way that you autom automatically get a private uh, key for every instance that you have. Um, you can compare also those private keys. You can um, also trust um, other uh, um, nodes. So when you when you compare them, uh -huh. and so you can build kind of your own trust. network of yeah. trust nice. that you that you know. Um, but basically, you can start to uh, communicate um, securely with uh, every node in the network. Nice, nice. And um, um, you ever had like it's been like ten years that you have this. So you ever had occasions of um, I don't know government infiltrating or. Uh, other people infiltrating in the network and trying to chat with you? Or just listening? Not that you could account for. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there is, um, we actually made an, um, an installation uh, about that um, in the government district uh, of Berlin, which was called Can You Hear Me? And um, it was kind of a trolling of all the um, spies that are listening because the whole government district in Berlin is um, heavily uh, listened to by the, by the NSA, by the GCHQ. And people were able to send messages to them as they are surveying the network. They kind of also have to read the, uh, um, the messages. And this was um, yeah, kind of a fun part. <laughs> but yeah, there there are of course um, many many things. It's uh, it's 
the, the thing of encryption is all is always a, a, a difficult thing. There have been many um, people, also activists, that told us, "Hey, don't get encrypted because it will make your life um, much harder." Um, let's say when you are working in a war zone and you don't you want the the parties to be able to read uh, what you write for that you, for that they know you are not planning a coup against them. If they are really overwhelming, they can uh, tear you down. Some others, they really want to be encrypted because they kind of yeah. want to have this security. So there, it's, it's, not, it's not the same, it's, it's not always a clear thing in, in what we are going. So the, the new protocol is all completely encrypted and um, yeah, but but it's, it's still open to communicate, and you can communicate with with everyone, which is of course unencrypted. But you can also communicate in group or um, uh, with with people directly. Encrypted. And what do you use for communicating with a with a group of people? You use Signal. You inherit the protocol of Signal, or what do you use? Uh, no, we uh, we use our own protocol. That's uh, that's why we are developing. Uh, that because we have been looking into many protocols and have not found any that was really able to um, to do what we wanted to do, so to have this this delay tolerance and to have this decentralization and also to have the cap uh, capacity um, of uh, having real time communication and also knowing um, what you are doing. So um, at the moment. We have uh, uh, a contract with uh, the Open Technology uh, Foundation, which is uh, funding this uh, new development uh, called Dot Two O. Yeah. Group messaging is hard. So. So in your in your new version, uh, it sounds like you no longer depend strictly on OLSR. No, is, is we, we right? got rid of. Okay. We got rid of all of that. So, can you speak a bit more about how the nodes communicate? Do they does one send a multicast and the other one, and then they discover each other and make a TCP connection and then store and forward this messages over that, or what's yes. the Yes, um, this is all in the network modules. So every network module can use whatever that network can do. So we. Um, we we made it really versatile here to be able to also get um, all the things uh, that we can do in, in every of these networks. Some, some networks, they, uh, they need you to have an IP address, some others do not. Um, so we kind of need to be very versatile there. We can also um, access, of course, community mesh networks. Um, there in, in OLSR, you already know who is there, or also in Batman Advanced, you, this is already kind of done by another protocol. We don't need to, um, to double that and can also get um, information um, out of that. Otherwise, yes, we are sending um, uh, broadcast messages and they are picked up and then um, uh, based on this um, they they do their own heuristics and kind of build their idea of the network. See, so in, in the case where you send a broadcast message over like a Wi-Fi direct type of thing, do you does the other side see the broadcast and then that's a node discovery and then they connect to the node, say TCP or something? Or is everything done in broadcast? Like here's a message, wrap it up, shove it out like uh, which um so yes they, uh, it will be uh, done uh, basically in broadcast but also in in tcp but this also depends on what we can use okay. because all the networks they have different uh, possibilities and uh, this this should be uh, completely abstracted here so okay. we we want to be network agnostic so um and of course not every a connection possibility will give you the same possibility also of interacting okay. um, with the other person. So we, we try to, to kind of uh, move away from there. And, and just lastly, uh, I'm curious, can you mix the topologies? Can you mix the network inf interface types? For example, could you traverse Freifunk and then come out and do Bluetooth within the camp? Yes. And so you can... Yes. OK, fascinating. That's, That's good. So I, I have a question also. Uh, how do we know who you're talking to? Like, um, is there a, a user directory, or do you have to know the, the public key of the person you want to communicate with? Yes, we are basically uh, communicating well, oh. oops, uh, with the nodes. So the nodes are doing um, the whole encryption, and you can have many nodes in one device. 
So every node has one identity, and uh, they can also change um, the uh, the device. Okay. So but we also separated uh, that also to be able to make this uh, web interconnections that we already now have. We have a web interface for people who have not installed the app and still can communicate. But so you need to know the public key of the node in advance of the node that you want to communicate with. Yes. Okay. Yes, but the public keys they are then shared among uh, the different devices. They have also their um, kind of a store, and they um, they communicate deliberately also with all the other nodes and uh, tell them, okay, I have this and this node, I know this and this one. So this is needed um, uh, to be quicker. This is also needed um, uh, for the delay tolerance mm. that you kind of know all the nodes in the network. Yeah, but, uh, uh, let's say that I want to send a message to Matthias. How do I know your public key? Uh, do we have to like exchange a QR code or, um, or what is the you, bootstrap? You can uh, see basically all the, in the user discovery, all the users that are here. Okay. So you will, the, the network should automatically discover me when I'm in the network, and then you can send me a, net, uh, a message, and if this network does not know anything about me, you mm. cannot communicate about uh, uh, with me. And if uh, somebody else says, oh, I'm Matthias, then... I'm yes, well, the first time you, um, you saw me, uh, you were getting um, my uh, public key, if this public key changes and somebody else says, uh, I'm Matthias, you will, um, you will see that. <laughs> so, but yeah, before you have uh, not compared my um, uh, uh, key with your uh, key that you got, you cannot be sure that there is not a man in the middle. Yeah. Okay. So we have no kind of centralized trust, but mm. there will be centralized instances. instances um, uh, we copied that uh, conceptually a bit from, from Tor. They also have kind of uh, nodes that are um, managing um, many important things around them, and they are chosen automatically by um, nodes that are um, almost up, uh, almost always up and kind of are able to also fulfill those tasks and uh, be more important than other nodes, so. Okay, thank you. So, yeah. um, there are, are there other apps that do something similar like this? I remember there was something that had more or less the same uh, concept. I don't remember its name, I was looking for it and there are a lot of academic initiatives that look like this. I remember one f that is called I Trust, that is from okay. California, Santa Barbara, where they, they, there is a lot of stuff on delay tolerant networks in, in the literature. So my question is, did you check uh, wh what's around and uh, if there are similar things and what are the differences? Um, yes, we needed to make a lot of uh, competitive research <laughs> before and um, our Main uh, differences, I, I would say, maybe you have, you know, something that I, I don't know yet, is that we are able to do kind of the real time communication and the delay uh, tolerance. And um, this is for us kind of the main importance also to build our own protocol and not to. Um, kind of relay on others. There there have been different initiatives with some of the people I have personally also talked. There was an initiative, they did an RFC from NASA, and um, a guy implemented this for reindeers in Finland or Norway. And um, so basically what they told me is that it didn't work for them, they, but they, they mostly tried then to kind of uh, make something like a TCP cache. And, and work like that. So um, a store and forward is of course kind of not that interoperable with the internet and so uh, takes us in our own domain, which is, uh, um, which is something that is not so nice. Um, on the other hand, um, with our service APIs, uh, we also allow um, other people to use um, uh, this network. So, um, and then one of the things that always kind of made us different from our um, uh, from from the other people that do do same 
uh, or similar things is that we have all the services in one application. So you don't have kind of, there is, I don't know, there is, there is wind and chime, for example, at, at the moment that are also doing uh, similar stuff, but they have kind of a network of many different apps. And uh, it then gets quickly very confusing on who is talking where and is it working or is it not working. Uh, we have there um, the, the advantage to, to be able to have um, a basic set of services for communication and having this all in one application. Yeah. Is your the new version that you're talking about here, Britain and Rust, etc. Is that done? Is it available? No, we, no. That's uh, ah. at the moment uh, the project we are working on. Okay. So it uh, um, the first, I would say the first testable version will be available in four to five months. We are working since about one and a half years on the concept since about half a year on the realization of it, so um, I'm really sorry. Uh, and um, yeah, we are, we are getting along quite well. We are trying to not make all the mistakes or, or learn a lot from the lessons from the version 1.0. So also by giving it a, a very clear structure and separating it by layers, but um, yeah, this is already on GitHub and it's in the main uh, master repository what we are doing now. That was my next question. So, okay. Cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, of course. One question. Uh, I I went to your website and tried to download the Android application. Yeah. Uh, is there any signed way to do that? Like uh, there is a, an open source free software store for Android uh, applications, which is Fdroid, but uh, Kaul is not there. No, Kaul is not there, and we decided not to go there because the version 1.0 is still relying on the ad hoc network which is working on very few devices and <laughs> so um, I mean there are other apps that do that serval is one of them and if you download and try it you will most probably fail so in 99% of, of all the kind of your system is, ju is just not matching so we don't want to have this negative user experience that's yeah okay great Thank you. There. <laughs> but the new one will be there and uh, will also be de deployed via um, the Android store and should use whatever the mobile phones um, uh, give you. Great, thanks. Briar, that was yeah, Briar. Yeah, I, I looked uh, quite a long time into this, their um, uh, protocol and they claim to do um, also delay tolerant, but um, this was then kind of set for the future and I wasn't so... But the thing that the security analysis that they did on the protocol was pretty, pretty tough. Yeah. Uh, so you, you may actually, really yeah. for instance, uh, I have been interested in this in, in the past and there is something that when, when you are in a context where activists are and governments are, something that is really important is that people do not show their network of connections. So if somebody gets stolen off his mobile phone, you shouldn't be able to reconstruct the whole network because the day after they're going to chase one by the other, all, the, all these patterns. So, so this was uh, something that they discussed at the I time. I think that's a very fair point and I think this describes kind of very precisely also where the differences are. So Briar is really focusing on security and privacy and we are focusing on communication. So what we want people to do is to communicate and to be able to communicate as quickly and as easily as possible. And of course there is a, um, a security layer and of course we care about the security of the communication, but that's not our main goal. Um, with Prior you, have, you really have to first meet the person and then you can, so we, we tested it and it's, it works, but it's no fun to communicate over it.
So, um, and, and basically we want to go the other way. We want first to have communication and then the other has to be subordinate um, under that. Yeah, but that brings me maybe to, to my last point. Um, that um, I will do an other open communication meetup at five o'clock, I think yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, what I started to do when I was doing also research on other protocols, I found it very painful and very difficult also to do research on my own. Because especially when you are looking into network um, uh, protocols, then what do you do on your own? Either you set up a kind of a network with I don't know, five, five phones and, and apps or so. Um, and it takes a very long time. And at the end, you are still not sure whether you got the point or not. So um, uh, what uh, we are trying to do in open communication is to create a central um, uh, web page with, uh, um, with community tested um, uh, protocols. Um, we started with apps. Uh, we did already one on uh, mesh networking protocol. I would also like to do today something on mesh network protocols and also um, on uh, community um, uh, distributions um, for community networks. So on on kind of uh, Gluon or, or um, I don't know, I, I guess Guifi has a, a distro, Fryphone has a distro and so on. So on such distributions to create community networks and to think A, about the metrics, what are really the things that um, should be able uh, to compare, what are the things that people need to know um, for that they can decide on such a distro and then to write um, some markdown files today that we could put on the web page um, for people to uh, be able to see um, yeah how they can how they can quickly get an overview over what exists and what they could use okay yeah so basically if you want your protocol to be documented on on sound it looks like a good idea so and basically we will um, so this afternoon we have a few talks on the panel and um, we will do your meetup after the panel and it will be in the main room i mean maybe the place with cushions and uh, i will be here the whole day so yeah. we can also talk and <laughs> you can yeah i mean it can last until the end of the day if you want I and mean, mm -hmm. yeah cool cool well thank you <laughs> thank again you.